As their name indicates, the adrenal glands are located close to the kidneys in the dorsal retroperitoneal space. The left adrenal is medial and dorsal to the left kidney, edging on the lateral side of the aorta, just cranial to the left renal vein. Ventrally, the left phrenicobdominal vein divides the gland into the cranial and caudal lobes. The right adrenal is slightly more cranial and dorsal, and medial and dorsal to the right kidney, just lateral and dorsal to the caudal vena cava. The cranial mesenteric and celiac arteries branch off from the aorta just cranial to the left adrenal. The celiac artery, which is closest to the gland, branches into the splenic and hepatic arteries. In this dorsal view, we can appreciate the anatomical relationships between the adrenals and the neighboring vessels, namely the aorta, caudal vena cava, and renal arteries and veins. The phrenico-abdominal vein is on the right side, and it also divides the right adrenal into two lobes. Being able to recognize the vessels close to each adrenal gland will ensure that you can identify them with certainty. A convex probe is generally used to assess the left adrenal gland, at least initially. Color Doppler can help you identify the vascular structures in the region of the left kidney, which in turn helps to identify the adrenal gland. From a longitudinal plane of the left kidney, the renal vein is first identified and then followed along its course, ventral to the aorta, into the caudal vena cava. The adjacent renal artery branches off from the aorta with a red color Doppler signal as the blood flow is directed toward the probe. The longitudinal plane where the probe is pointed obliquely toward the central and dorsal region of the abdomen enables us to identify the aorta in the same view as the left renal vein and artery. Then, to find the adrenal that is located just caudally to these last two vessels. The cranial lobe may also extend ventral to these arteries as in this dog. Observe the small phrenico-abdominal vessel that runs along the ventral surface of the adrenal, as well as the celiac and cranial mesenteric arteries that branch off from the aorta close to where the adrenal is located. When the surface of the abdomen is flat enough and the patient tolerates a gentle pressure of the probe so that the adrenal becomes only a few centimeters deep, a linear probe is the best choice to obtain images with the best spatial resolution. From a longitudinal plane of the kidney, the renal artery and vein are scanned as you move medially toward the aorta. Observe the characteristic shape of the adrenal. It looks like a slightly flattened peanut with a weak echogenicity, slightly above the one of vessels. When in doubt, Color Doppler can help differentiate this structure from a vascular lumen. The adrenal medulla may also appear more echogenic than the cortex, with a junction sometimes well defined. Identifying the right adrenal gland may be a greater challenge because of its more dorsal and cranial location and the obstacles presented by certain segments of the GI tract in this region. In the longitudinal plane, and starting from the right kidney, move the probe cranially behind the costal arch, turning it gently into an oblique plane to locate the caudal vena cava and aorta. Using the same plane, turn the probe laterally to identify the adrenal just lateral to the caudal vena cava. The pressure applied by the probe may sometimes give the impression of a gland penetrating the lumen of the vena cava. You may sometimes need to move slightly laterally or medially to locate the gland. In B mode, follow the same steps. First identify the right kidney, and then slide the probe medially while following the right adrenal artery and vein all the way to the caudal vena cava, just ventral to the aorta. The aorta is differentiated from the vena cava by its obvious pulsation. 
The feces in the ascending and transverse colon are often a source of acoustic shadowing and reverberation, which will sometimes limit your exam. While the two lobes of the left adrenal gland are easily distinguished and symmetrical, the cranial lobe of the right adrenal gland will be more difficult to discern and is shaped like an arrowhead folded medially and ventrally. The right phrenico-abdominal vein can sometimes be recognized as it goes along the central portion of the gland, as shown by the anatomical reconstruction under the ultrasound exam. As seen in the previous ultrasound loops, the shape of the adrenal glands varies according to the side and image plane used. It can also vary in shape among animals. For example, it is flatter in larger dogs and more rounded in small dogs, and even more rounded in cats. Additionally, a thin hyperechoic rim may be present at the junction between the medulla and cortex in normal dogs. Measurement of its dorsal ventral thickness is most representative of its size. Normal adrenal glands vary between 4 and 7 mm in dogs and between 3 and 4 in cats. The impact of the different types of endocrine and other disorders on the adrenals must be understood when examining these glands and interpreting their size.